The Capcom Disney Hit Parade continued in 1990 with an adaptation of the adventures of some rodents in a tree. Coming off the success of DuckTales, choosing an adequate follow-up would be crucial to the legacy of the partnership. Rather than the elaborate single-player adventure that saw Scrooge McDuck amass great fortunes by traveling all over the world, Rescue Rangers presents a smaller scale, encompassing kitchens, parks, sewers, and a casino, in search of one corpulent feline. What it does have over DuckTales, though, is an excellent two-player experience. Whether you're alone or acting in tandem, tandem, there's a word I don't use nearly often enough, the idea is the same. Clamber through a level, avoiding and or eliminating threats as you progress, with a possible boss fight at the end of the stage. Finish a course and a bonus round challenges you to find a 1-up inside a time limit, hint, it's in the top middle, always, before taking you to the map to choose your next target. Interestingly enough, while the paths through the overworld map are non-linear, this leads to some levels being completely superfluous. If you really need more 1-ups, I suppose it might be worth it, but even then it's a stretch. You get a 1-up either by finding them in the field, or collecting either 100 flower icons or 20 stars. Your primary mode of attack, and defense for that matter, are the crates, apples, bombs, and concrete blocks you'll find stacked throughout the levels. Some reveal surprises when moved, such as more flower icons or acorns that restore your health. You can launch whatever you're carrying, either forward or straight up, and each has a different trajectory. Alternately, by ducking, you can hide within whatever you're carrying and set a trap for an oncoming foe. Hint, they're pretty dim. It's by no means difficult, but it gets almost insultingly easy after you pick up the concrete. It doesn't go away after eliminating an enemy, so you can just pick it up and duck into it again the next time something big shows up. The stages, though more linear than the DuckTales design, are wide and varied and stocked with all sorts of adorable but malcontent things looking to ruin your day. However, none can stand up to the destructive power of... a chipmunk hiding in a box. Like I said, this is kind of small scale. They can climb all over regular boxes, mind, that's not the problem, but a box concealing a chipmunk? They just lose their shit. Game over, man, that chipmunk is in a box! One last gripe. I realize that Capcom likes to swap ideas around, but honestly. The most challenging part of this game is right in the middle, where they decide it's a good idea to throw in a Mega Man-style disappearing blocks puzzle. I mean, seriously. Dr. Wily has better things to do than worry about a couple fuzzy woodland creatures who can talk and build airplanes out of pop bottles and whatnot. That's cute, but the bad doctor has a world to conquer. Much like DuckTales, Rescue Rangers received a sequel very late in the NES's lifespan. Also, much like DuckTales 2, Rescue Rangers 2 was largely ignored. There was a whole new world of 16 bits to explore, and besides, in each case, the original was good enough. It wasn't like Mega Man 1, which had some significant physics and balance issues. Mega Man 2 corrected things. Rescue Rangers was correct to begin with. Except those damn disappearing blocks. They even sound like Heatman's stage. They're after me, I know it. <laughs>